Hi everybody, Teddy here, late and simple, back at you with another review. You should know my face by now, Teddy, the Trinidadian Thunder from Down Under, eh? Eh? Down Under, basement, eh? you remember, it's cold outside, okay, it's cold, it's rainy, it's supposed to be spring, supposed to be spring, I, I'm, I don't know what happened, it's freezing outside, it hailed last night, it's raining today, it's miserable, so having one of those days. So if I'm all over the place, I apologize from, the from now. Wow, see what I'm talking about? I'll apologize from now. Um, as all of my other videos, we're going to talk about the knife. We're going to talk about this. Um, the knife we're doing today is a product by Cold Steel. In my opinion, probably better or on par, if not better, depends on what you think. Okay, in my opinion, it's just as good, if not better, than the Mora Companion. Okay, this is the Cold Steel Finhawk. Awesome blade, amazing blade. We're gonna get into this. It is a stainless, you, I hate stainless steel. But this stainless is amazing quality, easy to sharpen, holds a great edge, beautiful blade. I'm going to get into the Cold Steel Finhawk. I'm going to tell you maybe a bit about how this came around. We're going to get into the blade metallurgy, metallurgy, wow, a bit. The 4116, what does that mean? And cryo quenching, we're going to get into a little bit about that in a second. Let's get to this first. This is the Alec Bradley Filthy Hooligan. You can see it right there. It's a 6x50 ring gauge. It's a Nicaraguan Candela wrapper, as you can see. It's a Nicaraguan Hondura binder. Nicaraguan Hondura and Panamanian filler. Um, flavor profile. Well, you can see that nice green tobacco. You know, right off the bat, you're going to get a lot of really earthy flavors. That really nice, deep, rich, earthy flavors you're going to get from it. Wood, spice, maybe a little bit of hay, depending on your palate. I'm not so sure. Try it for yourself. But you're also going to pick up some surprising flavors. A little bit of vanilla and a nice, creamy texture to the finish. A nice, a sweet, creamy taste on the finish. It's a great smoke. Great transitional flavors. So as you continue smoking down, you're going to pick up subtle flavors awesome smoke great price gotta check this one out as i said before if you're in aurelia check out casa del humidor if you go to buffalo okay big shout out to the guys in buffalo i can't remember the exact address at nice ash check them out okay. guys thank you very much i had a wonderful time so if you guys are in the buffalo area check out nice ash also if you're in ontario go to casa del humidor Tell them Teddy sent you. Go check them out. All right. Now, Cold Steel Finhawk. Well, president of Cold Steel, uh, Lindsay Thompson wanted to create a blade that was inspired by the Finnish Puko. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. If, I, if I'm if i not, please let me know. Send a comment or something, let me know. Um, and if I offend anybody, I apologize. Okay. You know what, no, I don't apologize. I'm not being politically correct. I'm gonna be me. If you don't like it, change the channel. Please, no, don't, don't change the channel. Subscribe, hit the like button, you, you know. But anyway, she wanted to create a Puko style design blade. Um, the Puko style, the Puko, finished Puko design blade, wow, it's been around forever, hasn't changed, it's used for hunting, camping, uh, just as a EDC, it's been used forever, and hasn't been modified in any way, because hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, so she wanted to create something inspired by that design, so she gathered, so she got together with a knife maker by the name of Andrew Demko, and they went through a couple designs. 
finally settled on this. Now, a bit of specs on its blade. Blade length is four inches. Overall length of eight and a half inches with a four and a half inch handle. It's 2.7 millimeter thick. The weight, 3.5 ounces. Weighs next to nothing. You can carry this on your neck if you wanted to. Um, it has this Secure X polymer molded sheath. And the steel is a 4116 stainless cryo quenched German steel. Nice straight back design, nice belly to the blade. Look at the handle. You have nice belly to the handle. You have a rear keel on here, front keel on here. You have a bit of a lanyard hole at the back. There's no palm swell. There's more of a con a concave design as you can see right here. There's that concave design right there. And a thumb rest. I believe it's a thumb rest, whatever you want to call it. I really don't know, but it actually comes in pretty fun, pretty handy, actually. So beautiful design. Great design, simple design, scandy grind. As you can see, I forgot to mention that scandy grind. When I first got this, first thing I did was I put a slight secondary bevel on it. Reason being, when you have a scandy grind, it's a great, great for cutting great for processing because of that edge like i said before you have an edge like this you get a really fine point it's going to cut well but it's prone to rolling and getting burrs on the edge so took this this is my well forgive me like i said it's cold as hell outside that's going to go on from time to time so forgive me i took my workshop field sharpener and I put a slight secondary bevel on it. Guys, get yourself one. Cheap, great, lightweight. You're gonna you're gonna use it a lot, trust me. So I put a slight secondary bevel on it, and that's gonna prevent rolling, chipping, and burrs on the edge of this. Very easy to do. The sheath, nice simple polymer sheath. I put a dangle on the end. That way it can sit on my belt. I can take it off if I want to. Drainage hole at the bottom. Snaps in. Not coming out. It's you can wail on this all day. It's not coming out. So 4116 steel, what is it? Okay. 4116 steel is basically a makeup of chromium, carbon, molybdenum, and vanadium. Now we all know what chromium does. Chromium basically improves the uh, corrosion resistance. It's, uh, it increases your tensile strength and corrosion resistance, simply. Molybdenum and vanadium, both of them add corrosion resistance, wear resistance, durability, and strength. And your carbon steel, it's carbon steel, it's carbon. You know what it does. Tensile strength, it also improves the edge retention. So it's gonna give you a blade that's hard, very hard blade, easy to sharpen, great edge retention. That's what you're gonna get with this basic makeup. It's not, I would say it's not, uh, it's, it's similar to a 9CR18 MOV, something along those lines, similar. But the cryo quenching, that's where this blade gets its real improvement from the cryo quenching. Cryo quenching is basically, when you're done with your heat, your heat treating, your cycling, you heat it, you cool it, you heat it, you cool it, you go to your heat treating and your cycling. You then submerge the steel in liquid nitrogen, something along the lines, usually around minus 300 degrees, and it tightens the grain of the blade. So with that tightening of the grain, you get improved corrosion resistance, improved wear resistance, improved hardness and durability. So cryo quenching takes a really good heat treat and makes it that much better. 
that's what you get with a cryo quench. So, enough talking. Let's see what this blade does. Okay. So let's see what it does. Um, uh, okay, where are we? Here we go. Bushcraft saw blade, because of the thickness of this, you're not gonna chop with it. You can because this nice rare key line here, you can really grab on, you can do some chopping. The handle, despite this concave design, actually extremely comfortable. I was unsure about the handle design because I got so used to having a palm swell. You have that nice palm swell, fills out your hand, you feel really secure. So I was worried that I'm gonna have turning in my hands. When I use this blade, it's gonna turn, I'm gonna have to feel the flexing and turning in my hands as I use this. That's not the case. Um, it has this texturized grip. I was worried it might be a little too aggressive. Not the case. Very comfortable. This. Um, handle material it feels close to a TPE a thermoplastic elastomer I explained that in a couple of my other videos it's basically a chemical bond between rubber and plastic to create a type of material that's similar to polyurethane okay it's durable it's strong great shock absorption and easy to mold so fantastic knife handle product it's very comfortable nice textured grip even when wet your hands are not going to slip on this um, like I mentioned before I wear extra large size gloves and you can see I got a lot of room I got room on this blade so if you got extra large size hands it's an awesome blade we're not going to do a lot of serious batoning with this you're not going to do a lot of heavy use work with this okay this is your secondary knife What I usually do, I'll carry a bigger blade with me, I carry a chopper, and then I'll carry a smaller knife for all my detail work. If you're making pot hangers, you can do that. If you're making tent pegs, you can do that. If you're making uh, figure four trap, peyote deadfalls, you can do that. Um, shelter building, you can use this for it. But it is stainless steel. Uh, you can strike a ferrocium rod with a stainless steel blade, despite what I've heard from a lot of people. You can strike a ferrocium rod with stainless steel blade. What you cannot do with a stainless steel blade is strike flint. With flint, you need carbon steel. That's what gives a spark. So you can use a ferrocium rod because all you're doing is stripping off the material of the ferrocium rod. All you need is a 90 degree spine. That's it. This did not come with a 90 degree spine, but it was fairly simple to put one on, okay? So let's use this. We're gonna do a little bit of kindling made some feather sticking and then we're gonna break it down we're gonna get down to brass tacks we're gonna see whether or not it's worth it or move on to something else so we'll get into it a second. all right now all I gotta do is find my old faithful batoning stick where the hell did I put that thing um, oh here it is Old Faithful Botonic Stick. Now let's see. Okay. Now let's take a look at this edge. No chipping, no rolling of that edge. Still extremely sharp. I have to say, out of the box, this was a lot sharper than the Mora. No contest. This knife was way sharper than my Mora Companion HD out of the box. Edge retention, kind of impressed with this. Being a stainless steel, I'm actually really impressed with it. So let's take a look at this. Let's see how this thing does with feather sticking. There is no real drag on the blade because that's Scandi grind, there's no drag. 
it just simply slides right through this material. If you take your time, you can get some really, really fine curls on this. You have to forgive me, this wood is extremely dry. It's in my basement, so as I'm getting these curls, they're just wanting to break off because of the dryness. But there's no real effort into this, none whatsoever. I'm not fighting the blade. I'm not forcing it against the material. I'm just simply sliding it, as you can see. I'm just simply sliding it. If I can do it here for you guys. Just sliding it, and I'm getting that nice curls. Just sliding the blade. So there's no forcing it. And that will take a spark really easily. Now let's, um, let's try some chest cuts. Now really can't lay your thumb flat on this for chest cuts because of this edge here. I would love to have seen this edge be chamfered. Chamfer the edge, help you lay your thumb flat. You don't necessarily have to. I know some guys that like to lay their thumb flat on the blade when they do chest cuts. Other guys prefer pistol grip. It just depends on you. So let's try it this way. You see how it does in chest cuts. Really good, really well. Nice, clean cuts. Um, there's no staggering of the blade. I don't feel the blade binding on me. There's no rolling of that edge. It's still extremely, extremely sharp. Extremely sharp. Um, let's see if we can do a quick, I don't know, 10 peg. Something new, let's see if we can do a 10 peg. Here. Do a 10 peg here, see if we can. There you go. There's your 10 peg. Really simple, really easy. Beautiful, beautiful blade. Um, and still really sharp. I can get those nice curls on that blade. I get those nice curls from the blade, sorry really sharp I'm actually quite impressed with this blade I am NOT a stainless steel fan like I mentioned before really impressed by this I really there's not much I would change about this blade to be honest with you my only thing I would change is the top of this handle I would chamfer the edges that gives you a little bit more options to lay your thumb flat whatever it may be and a 90 degree spine Knife builders out there, please, please start including a 90 degree spine. I said it before, there's a lot of uses for it. The sheath, nice polymer, molded polymer sheath, very lightweight, drainage hole at the bottom. Very simple, Mora-esque design. One downfall to this, well there's two downfalls in my opinion. Number one, there's no push off point. So when you do lock your knife in, there's no push off point here. So you have to pull on it to get it out, which is gonna make it a bit difficult if you have it on your belt. You're gonna have to reach over, hold this down and pull out instead of having a push off point where you can just pop the knife out. I would love to see a push off point here, something, a thumb rest where you can push the blade out. That'll make it a little bit easier to use and get at when you need it. The other thing, retention. When you first get this and you put this in the sheath, it is extremely tight to get in. But what you're gonna notice, it's gonna start to wear grooves right there. There's a groove right there that corresponds with channels that run on the inside of the sheath. They start to wear into the actual handle. So, I would try and figure out a different way of securing this without that because it's going to wear into the handle. It's going to loosen up over time. It's still really tight, it's still going to get a great friction fit but what you can get is this. 
you're getting rattling. So I am getting some rattling, but it's not going to come out. That's basically the only downsides I have to this is the sheath needs a push up point. I need to find a new way of securing this because it is way too tight when you first get it. It's hard to draw out of the sheath. It's even harder to put back in. You're going to force it in and you're going to think you're at the point where it's supposed to be. No, you got to keep pushing until you hear that click. So it is a bit tight fitting. Okay. But otherwise, fantastic blade. So if I had to break this blade down, if I had to break it down for you, in terms of like or dislike, do I like this blade? I love this blade. I think it is an awesome, awesome bushcraft blade, especially if you're looking for something stainless. I don't know, you're in colder temperatures, you do a lot of hunting, stuff like that, and you don't want to have to constantly worry about, did I bring some, did I bring oil with me? Dry my blades, oil my blades. It just gets rid of that one concern. So it's an awesome blade. You don't have to worry about edge retention with that because the edge retention is fantastic. Um, I have not touched this up yet. I've used it, done a lot of cutting with it, and it's still really sharp. So, haven't really had to do a lot of touching up with it. Here's the best part. Under 25 bucks. I don't need to say anything else. $25? Under $25. Are you kidding me? I have blades that are four times this cost that don't perform like this. You know which one I'm talking about. You can check my review. You know exactly what I'm talking about. All I'm going to say is Boker. That do not perform like this awesome blade um i gotta give this a five out of five five out of five despite the drawbacks despite the concerns i've brought up this is a five out of five knife it's a great first timer's blade it is an awesome blade just to have you throw in your pack you can even make a make an emergency kit for your car some blankets whatever it may be put it in a container throw one of these in there just in case it's an awesome blade I would just suggest put a 9 degree spine on it, pair it up with a ferrocene rod, you got an awesome package. Um, I've taken this with me, I've gone I've gone day hiking, so I've taken this with me, got a lot of use out of this. So, it is an awesome blade, I definitely recommend you guys picking up one of these. So, Cold Steel Finhawk, two thumbs up, gotta love it, get yourself one, you're gonna love this blade. You can check out srknives.com, you can check out Knife Center, Blade HQ. Um, I'm sure wherever you guys get your knives, you can find it, Amazon, all these places, look it up. You can find some great deals out there. Get yourself one, guys. You're going to be impressed. You're going to love this blade. So, remember, guys, keep it sharp, keep it oiled, keep it in the sheath. You take care of your blades, guys. They'll be there when you need them. So, until next time, I'm Teddy, and you're watching Blade and Simple.